greetings to everyone. So I'll be talking about the cone beam computed tomography in this video. So as the name suggests, cone beam computed tomography is a three-dimensional imaging modality in which a cone-shaped beam is projected onto the patient and the resultant image is obtained in multiple slices in all three dimensions, which is what tomography means. And the resultant image is seen in a computer monitor. So altogether it is called the cone beam computed tomography. So uh, the following are the two dimensional imaging modalities that are commonly used in dentistry, like intraoral periapical radiographs used to view the Teeth, the periapical region and the alveolar bone, the bite wing radiographs, which are commonly used to view the interdental alveolar bone, the interdental calculus deposits, overhanging restorations and proximal caries. Occlusal radiographs are used to view uh, the impacted canines or the cyst tumors uh, and all such lesions. Panoramic radiography is used to view the entire maxilla and mandibular structures and extra oral TMJ and skull projections are used to view the pathologies involving the skull. So the disadvantages of all these two dimensional imaging is the superimposition of structures. So all the uh, structures that are present in different regions will be superimposed one on another and all together are seen in a single film. Say for example, this is a panoramic image in which there is a radio opaque lesion present superimposed over the canine and premolar in the third quadrant. Uh, this arrow depicts the radio opaque uh, lesion and uh, seeing this uh, panoramic image, we cannot decide on whether the radio opaque lesion is present inside the mandible or it is present outside the mandible, which is getting superimposed on the mandible. So it becomes difficult to locate the lesion, the exact location of the lesion cannot be identified precisely using two-dimensional imaging. It is only apparent. Uh, this is the cross-sectional slice of the same patient which shows the same radio-opaque lesion which is present lingual to the mandible, probably a sialonith. So the same radiopic structure was superimposed on the mandible in a two-dimensional imaging. So this is the main advantage of a three-dimensional imaging over a 2D imaging. So these are the three slices uh, in which the image slices are generated in 3D imaging. So this is the coronal slice. Uh, the coronal slice is the uh, mediolateral slice and transverse is the cross-sectional slice and sagittal plane, it produces the anteroposterior slices. So in all the three planes, the image slices are produced in multiple numbers, which are compiled together to form a 3D reconstruction for the same region. So the main principle of cone beam computed tomography is it is performed using a rotating gantry or a C-arm supporting the X-ray source and a detector. So this rotating gantry rotates around the patient. Uh, that is on one side is the X-ray source and on the other side is the detector. So these two will rotate ar around the patient continuously for one single rotation, not more than that. A divergent X-ray source collimated as a cone or more commonly as a pyramid is directed through the region of interest within the maxillofacial region and the residual attenuated photons strike the detector on the opposite side. So from the source side, a cone-shaped beam is projected on the detector. So the beam is cone-shaped so that it covers the entire region of interest. That is the entire volume of the face will be covered by the cone-shaped beam. So this is an image example of a CBCT machine. So this is the uh, positioning of the patient. The patient is seated here. This is the chin rest and uh, head rest for the patient. This is the source and the detector altogether the rotating gantry which rotates around the patient and this is the monitor in which the image is finally 
displayed after reconstruction. So the image detectors used in CBCT are image intensifier detectors and flat panel detectors. Though these two are used, most commonly used one is a flat panel detector because the image distortion is relatively less when flat panel detectors are used. So uh, this image shows, uh, I mean, this picture shows how an image is produced using a CBCT machine. So this is the source, this is the detector, a flat panel detector, which is square in shape, which has numerous, uh, which has numerous pixels. So when the uh, power is, the power supply is given, a cone-shaped X-ray beam comes out of the source. So this cone-shaped X-ray beam covers the entire volume of the skull. It sweeps through the entire skull before hitting the detector. So in this way, when the source completes an entire rotation, all the volume of the region of interest is being uh, exposed to radiation multiple times. The entire region will be covered by the X-ray source n number of times as it rotates through the patient. So in one single rotation, the entire volume is covered for multiple times. So this is not the case for CT imaging uh, in which a fan-shaped beam is used. So the disadvantage of a fan-shaped beam is that it, the fan-shaped beam is linear and so it covers only one single slice or one single linear region of the patient. So when the X-ray source and detector makes one complete rotation, only one slice of a region is uh, one slice of a region is covered and one slice of an image is produced. So multiple rotations are needed to produce multiple slices. Whereas in CBCT, entire volume is covered by the cone beam. So one single rotation is sufficient for imaging. So in this way, the radiation exposure is very much less in CBCT compared to CT imaging. So during the rotation, multiple sequential 2D images are captured. So the entire volume is covered and multiple two-dimensional images are being captured in the flat panel detectors. And these two-dimensional images constitute the raw primary data and are individually referred to as basis images. So uh, angulation can be set in CBCT imaging. Say, for example, if I'm uh, setting 360 degree and if I want around 350 basis images, I can um, set uh, the base angle of the CBCT uh, in such a way that I will get around 350 basis images. That is, uh, say, for example, for every two degree change in angle, one two-dimensional image will be produced. So in this way, multiple basis images are produced based on the uh, setting which is given by the operator. And these basis, in hundreds of basis images are together called the projection data. So the complete series is known as the projection data and the individual 2D slice image is called the basis image. Because CBCT exposure incorporates the entire region of interest, only one rotational scan of the gantry, like I said before, is necessary to acquire enough data for 3D image construction. The size of the scanned object volume of the patient is called the field of view, commonly abbreviated as FOV. This field of view or FOV is very important for CBCT because it represents the object volume. So here the object volume is entire skull. So if we want to capture the entire skull of the patient, then a larger FOV CBCT machine is used. When uh, just the maxillary mandibular region is needed, a medium-sized FOV machine is used. So only uh, the jaws are captured. Whereas in smaller FOV machines, just one single quadrant is captured. So in this way, exposure can also be reduced to the patient depending upon the need of the patient and the region of interest. So uh, different FOV machines are available for uh, that specific case. So there are three main components to CBCT image production. First is the X-ray generation. 
So as the rotating gantry makes a rotation, uh, the X-ray is generated, which is detected through the flat panel detectors. That is X-ray detection. So once it is detected through the flat panel detectors, each basis image is rapidly processed by the flat panel detectors and continuously the pixel data are sent to the computer software. So the software immediately gathers the data. It provides a particular grayscale value depending upon the electrical voltage in each single pixel and the image is reconstructed once the grayscale value is set for individual basis images, they are reconstructed to form a three-dimensional image, I mean, a 3D volumetric data set. So this is how the uh, CBCT image is displayed on the monitor. So this is the uh, volumetric data set or the uh, three-dimensional data set. So in this volumetric data set, the cursor can be moved in any plane. It can be moved in coronal, sagittal, or axial plane, depending upon the interest of the operator or depending upon the region to be focused. So as the cursor is moved along the different regions, that particular region where the cursor is placed, uh, that particular region will be shown in all three planes. So in this is the cross-sectional or axial plane, this is the coronal and this is the sagittal plane. So say for example, if I want it at the level of turbinates, this is how the image is produced. So at the level of turbinates of the nose, coronal, axial and sagittal images are displayed. So likewise, the cursor can be moved uh, in all directions to view that particular region and all the three planes in that particular region. So CT versus CBCT. So uh, uh, CBCT is very advantageous when compared to uh, CBCT in that CT has a much higher resolution whereas CBCT does not have. But apart from that, CBCT has many other advantages. So CT is usually a large sized machine whereas CBCT is a smaller sized machine. And CT uses fan shaped beam uh, radiating from source in which the transmitted radiation is in the form of a helix or spiral. So like I said before, since it is a fan-shaped beam, uh, multiple rotations are needed for uh, generating multiple slices, whereas in CBCT, the cone-shaped beam uh, from the X-ray source covers a larger volume. And detector size is linear and thin in C, uh, CT, whereas it is large and flat, flat panel detectors used in CBCT. Uh, CT is ideal for imaging the malignancy invasion into soft tissue is well detected. So soft tissue resolution is very high in CT, uh, CT, which is not the case for CBCT. So CBCT is not ideal for malignancy. And CT is of high cost, whereas CBCT is of low cost. And complete 360 degree rotation produces one single slice of the image, which also I mentioned before. Whereas in one complete 360 degree rotation, entire image is obtained in CBCT, which is the main advantage of CBCT. And very high dose around 100 times more than CBCT for viewing the same region. Whereas very low dose around 20 to 150 microsievert for CBCT. And CT has both hard and soft tissue window, whereas soft tissue resolution, like I said, is very low for CBCT. And this is the fan-shaped beam of the CT. So this is the linear detector. So in one single rotation, a linear slice is detected through the detector. So multiple spiral rotations around the patient is made. So the uh, rotating gantry slowly moves from one side to other side of the patient, uh, making multiple rotations. So this is the CBCT cone beam and uh, flat panel detector. So only one single rotation is needed and the entire volume is covered. The main advantages of CBCT imaging is the size and cost. CBCT equipment is of uh, uh, same size as that of OPG machine. So the space occupied is very less, whereas the conventional CT machine, it needs double, triple the space as that compared by, as that uh, occupied by CBCT. And it is approximately one fourth to one fifth the 
cost of CT. So uh, CT is four to five times costlier than CBCT, even the machine to purchase. And fast acquisition of images. So within 30 seconds, the entire rotation is made and the image is uh, acquired in 10 to 15 seconds. Sub millimeter resolution, high resolution images may be required for viewing fine detailed structures and disease processes, which is also possible with CBCT. When compared to other two dimensional modalities used in dentistry, this provides a very high resolution and relatively low patient radiation dose. So the values are approximately equivalent to 1 to 42 digital OPGs. So when one CBCT is compared to OPG, Depending on the FOV, it ranges from 1 to 42 digital OPGs, which is very less when compared to CT. There are uh, very few disadvantages for CBCT. One is the image noise. CBCT produces scattered radiation, and this is recorded as noise, which produces image degradation. This scattered radiation is produced because of the cone-shaped beam. So the cone beam produces divergent rays. So naturally, scattered radiations are produced. So image noise is high. So uh, degradation or the quality of the image will be compromised due to this. And also poor soft tissue contrast because of the reduced uh, radiation exposure. Uh, the soft tissue contrast may, may is directly proportional to the radiation given to the patient. So the more or the higher the radiation, the more will be the soft tissue contrast. Uh, do, so these are the different dosages of radiation uh, for different imaging modalities. For CBCT, it is 25 to uh, 1025 microsivet, whereas for CT, it is up to 2000 microsivet. For OPG, it is 16 microsivet. For an IOPA, conventional IOPA, it is 8 microsivet. And for RVG, it is 2 to 3 microsivet. So, uh, before prescribing radiographs to the patients, depending on the need of the patient and the underlying pathology, three-dimensional images have to be prescribed. So not all the cases are ideal for CBCT imaging, but if the, uh, if the patient needs further investigation or if the two-dimensional imaging is not going to help in one particular case, that is when the CBCT imaging is advised for the patient when it comes to oral medicine and radiology. Thank you.